Hi, my name is Stephanie Krieger and I'm a Microsoft Office MVP. In this video, I'm going to be demonstrating tasks from the article titled Using VBA to Control Built-in Commands in the 2007 Office System. So let's jump into Word and get started right now. If you're an advanced Microsoft Office user and you've started writing your own VBA macros, you may have run into situations where you'd like to be able to replace a built-in command with custom functionality, maybe display a built-in dialog box, or otherwise have your macros interact with built-in functionality. Well, some of the Office programs provide more options than others for working with built-in commands, but you do have some access to built-in commands in all Office 2007 programs that support VBA. So for this demo, we're going to look at two of the ways to work with built-in commands that are discussed in the referenced article and we're starting here in Word because Word provides unique access to many built-in commands. All you need to do is name the macro with the name of the built-in command and your macro overrides the built-in option. Pretty cool, right? So let's take a look at how that works. I'm going to go to the Developer tab, click on Macros to open the Macros dialog box and then from the Macros in list, select Word Commands to see this list that you see right here. Now. For example, let's suppose that you're creating a document template. You don't want to restrict formatting in that template, but you do have some particular requirements. Maybe bold and italics should never be used together on the same text and should always appear in a specific font color. So perhaps you want to replace the action of bolding or italicizing text with a character style that contains the formatting you need. So we're going to go ahead and choose the bold command to see how that works. Once you choose the command, go back to the macros in list and select the template or document where you want to save that. In this case, this is going to be my sample template that you see open here on screen. Then you just have to click Create. And VBA is going to go ahead and create that macro with the built-in command name. It's simply bold in this case. It's going to give you a brief description and then the built-in functionality, which is just one line of code in this case. Now, I'm going to go ahead and comment out that built-in functionality, even though we want to override it. There's no reason to delete it. So if I want to use a character style, maybe the built-in character style for bold, which is called strong, I can replace that functionality, but notice that the built-in command is a toggle command, right? I've got selection.font.bold equals the word toggle constant. And so I'm going to use a conditional statement to mimic that toggle functionality. So I'm going to check first if the style is already applied, then reset the font. That's the same as clearing character formatting from the selection. Otherwise, go ahead and apply that style. Okay, give that a quick look and let's go ahead back into the document and see how it works. I'm going to go ahead and select a couple of words, go to the Home tab, click on Bold. Notice on the Quick Access toolbar I've added the style box so you can see that Strong was applied to the selected text. You can also easily see that that's not the built-in bold functionality because I also added a font color. So pretty easy, right? With this example, keep in mind that the bold toggle command is what you get from the Home tab or the Control b shortcut, but selecting font bold in the font dialog box is not the toggle command. What I've done here isn't going to intercept the option that you can do from the font dialog box. It's a good example to point out that you really want to check every possible entry point for a command that you want to intercept to see where it may not be affected, right? Where your macro may not affect the command you want to intercept. Now in this case, this works perfectly for me because as I said before in this example, we don't want to completely restrict formatting. I want to let the user do direct formatting if they need to, but I want to make my preferred formatting options be the default so that's the easiest thing for them to apply. Now for the next option, for our next task, we're going to go ahead and look at displaying built-in dialog boxes. Word and Excel both enable you to display built-in dialog boxes, so let's go ahead back into the Word VBA Editor, and we're going to use the application object. There's a dialog property of the application object, as you see here, that allows you to display most built-in Word dialog boxes. Excel has the same, but many of the Office programs do not have this option. So what do you do, for example, if you need to display a built-in dialog in PowerPoint? Let's go ahead and take a look. OK, let's Alt F11 to jump into the PowerPoint VB Editor. And of course, what I'm about to show you, you can use in a macro, but because we're just going to be executing one statement, I'm going to use the immediate window for this demonstration. And we're going to use the Command Bars object here and find control. So what we're actually doing is looking for a built-in control that would be in a legacy 
interface on a toolbar or menu, right? That's the legacy command bars object that we're looking for. We're going to find a control and execute it just as if the user clicked that command. So what we need to identify the control, as you see here, is an ID, a control ID number. Now, you can get those very easily for the ribbon-enabled programs in Office 2007 by downloading a workbook from Microsoft that contains the control IDs for all of the ribbon-enabled Office 2007 programs. And you can find a link to that download in the article that was referenced at the start of this demo. So, what we're going to do right now is go to the ribbon control workbook for PowerPoint that's contained in that download. Here we are, and say for example that the dialog box you want to display is Pay Special. So I'm going to use Control F to open the Find dialog box, and I'm going to search for Pay Special, and the control name, of course, doesn't have any spaces in it. Find Next, and there we go. So once I find the Pay Special dialog box, let's just shoot down to the end of that row. The policy ID is the last column in this workbook and that is the same thing as the control ID number so the number I need as you see right here is 755 let's shoot back over to PowerPoint and finish that up okay so I enter that control ID and then I'm gonna execute so I have command bars find control identify the control and then execute the command just press enter to execute that line there's the pay special dialog box. All right. So a couple of things to keep in mind about using control IDs. First of all, where a feature is common to several programs, such as pay special is, right, there's a good chance that the control ID will be the same regardless of which office program you're using, and it is in this case. Also note that even though the command bars object is a legacy object, com control IDs for the new commands that you find in the control ID workbook, commands that are new to Office 2007, that is, will still work using this method. All right. Now, for help on how to find the control IDs for Office 2007 programs that don't use the ribbon. Hang on to that thought. Okay, you want to go back and check out the article referenced here and that is using VBA to control built-in commands in the 2007 Office system. That article also goes into some other methods for interacting with built-in functionality, such as programmatically controlling one Office application from another, like if you need your word code to run commands in PowerPoint and Excel, or vice versa. And that's kind of fun, and it's easier, a lot easier than you may expect. The article also introduces a very powerful approach for interacting with built-in functionality called events. Now, events enable you to run code based on actions that the user takes in the program while they're using it. Really powerful, really flexible functionality, so definitely check that out. And meanwhile, thanks for joining me, and see you next time. If you'd like to check out the article referenced in this demo, find it on MSDN at the URL shown on this slide.